Welcome back. Well, the central bank's action against Paytm has led to a sharp fall in the stock price. But it was not a straight fall, and all distress is not the same. Nimesh has got some interesting data. He's hopped across to the wall to tell us more. Nimesh, take it away. <laughs> Well, you know, Nigel, uh, the big newsmaker of the week was Paytm, right, on the back of that RBI action. And we saw huge volatility in the stock price as well. Now the key question is, is this the right time to buy or an avoid? Let's not get into that. But I've just looked at the history on what the RBI action means for the large corporates or the large companies which have not complied with the, uh, with the regulators. So let's look at the... Let's, let's start with Paytm first. What we saw from an IPO price, the stock is down almost 80-odd uh, 80, 80 percent, 81 percent to be precise. Uh, it, today, actually, this week, the stock hit a low of 395, and I've seen a bit of a pullback from that. But that's the very limited industry that we have uh, after the RBI action, that, which happened uh, earlier this week. Now, look, uh, so, you know, yesterday, RBI governor spoke on PTM, deputy governor spoke as well, and the, and the governor was very clear in his, in his message that if everything has been compliant with, why should we act? The, you know, they take restrictions when the, uh, when the engagement doesn't work with the corrective actions not taken. So there has been serious lapses is what, uh, you know, been the key reason why RBI had to take the action what, which, they took, which it took on Paytm. But if you look at the history of uh, such actions by the RBI on, on various companies, that will show you a different picture. I'll start with Dewan Housing first. Look at the Dewan Housing chart. Uh, from a high of uh, six, uh, 679, the stock has co had collapsed almost 97%, and eventually it got merged into, uh, into, into Piramal. So it got stopped trading in, in, uh, in 2021 after it got merged into uh, Piramal Ent Enterprises. So that's been the history for Diwan Housing we saw. And there was a multiple, you know, uh, volatility as well in this particular stock. That's one example. Now look at RBL Bank. If you look at RBL Bank, the peak price was 701 way back in, uh, in, 20, in 2019. From there, we've seen a lot of bouts of volatility in that stock price. It hit a low of almost 77 in 2022. This is when uh, RBI finally took an action. They got the board change. They got a new CEO as well. RBI representative came in. And after that, we saw a big recovery in that stock price in 2024. So that's been the history of RBL Bank. Now look at Yes Bank as well. Even if you look at Yes Bank, the high of almost 400, which was in 2018, that stock had seen a 98% correction from the top. Uh, hit a low of almost 11 rupees in 2021. Again, this is where the RBI action came in, right? They got uh, the, the PSU banks and private banks to come in. Take over the take over yes, yes bank and from there after they got a new ceo this is how the stock rally has been so the key question is what is the key message from the history on uh, what what the uh, what the regulator action takes whenever there is an rba action the stock has seen a pretty much of there's a lot of volatility the stock now, now, you know corrects a lot it does recover a, a, and see some pullbacks as well but the end game has been pretty worse for many of these companies also if you look at uh, you know uh, some other companies in there they, Again, you know, when, when I saw, show this charts, when the stocks have bottomed, it's largely been bottomed when there has been some action change in terms of ownership or in terms of the change of board. So clearly, history suggests that when there are large RBA actions, one need to be very careful. The stock price will see some pullbacks, but the end game for many of the stocks have been very bad and only improved when there has been a change of guard. All right, uh, Nimesh, very interesting link there. And I think what you said, uh, is, you know, in terms of the fact that when the collapse Happens. It happens. It's not one way. <laughs> there you are see a lot of volatility. On the stocks chart, we could back. not see, but exactly. some of those rallies are massive. Are massive. They, you know? I mean, stocks sometimes <clears throat> have even pulled back 50, 60 percent. Yeah. And you know, everybody feels like okay, this is done deal. Now, this is other yeah. kya And from there, the stocks have half. become half. From there, it's become half. Yeah. So, but the history suggests that we need to be very, very careful in companies where there is a regulatory action, especially in the financial space. And, and from from a regulator and like absolutely RBI, absolutely from a regulator like RBI, which exactly. has so much credibility, you know, a yeah. lot of people have said a lot of stuff. Uh, obviously, RBI would have seen something, and that's why it, have, it would have acted. I mean, it would have seen something. That's why it had acted earlier in uh, cases which Nimesh mentioned, and maybe same is the case with Paytm Payments Bank. So obviously, you know, uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, you got to make a bit of a distinction between the listed Paytm and uh, uh, Paytm Payments Bank. Uh, that that is also true. But yes, uh, for now, there's a lot of there price There is one damage. more. I'm not sure if that really matters. And I was talking to Nimesh earlier. Yeah, we were which is that, uh, all the other instances, they are banks, financial yeah. institutions, where it's a matter of leverage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the biggest risk with bank, uh, financial institutions. Whereas Paytm, in that sense, I mean, the lending which has also been happening has been happening out of bank books, not through their book. Uh, so it's not a leveraged institution in that sense. So it's a maybe a slightly different uh, yeah. business model. But uh, I think but the again, great data again, in terms know, of... Again, yeah. it's not only... I, I just took the RBI example and the, and the few, yeah. few examples. But even if you look at SEBI, for instance, there are many instances when regulators take a very sharp uh, stand. Yeah. 
you've seen a you've seen massive volatility and the end game has been pretty poor for a lot of people so i just wanted to put a put a piece that you know one needs to be very careful especially yeah. the traders need to be very careful in such companies where there is a stringent RBI or a regulatory action happening. Well, you know, Braveheart would say <coughs> that the stock was at 2,100 odd. It's come down to uh, 400 odd. But as you said, you'd be careful when there is uh, this sort of regularly overhang. And it has cash and, in the books of 171 rupees. In case yeah. of Yes Bank, in case of RBL Bank, a lot of other stocks, uh, mm. for that matter, you know, some of the NBFCs as well. There have been a lot of rumors about somebody will buy out, somebody will take it over. Yeah. Stock will run, run up 50%. But and Endgame has been pretty, pretty, pretty bad for Nigel, and the 100 price, I think that was an unreal price. No, that was that valued the business at $20 billion. Yeah. It, it uh, listed at, uh, it, that was the high. I mean, there was a listing high and then Indeed. it, uh, of course, I mean, we know what happened At that point of time, this IPO frenzy was at its high. Yeah. And imagine some of them, they only got in that IPO. <laughs> you know, that's, it's painful. You, know, you meet a, investors. That was and, a different frenzy. I mean, that was no. a time when even the CFO said we could have priced it higher. Indeed. And they could have, actually. <laughs> could have. So, you know, that, that was, of course, a different time. And, and yeah. you know, uh, that I was know, I know. Maybe your sense on, uh, yeah. on, on, you know, not only on Paytm, but generally when there is a regulatory action, how do you as a fund manager approach those kind of companies? What is your advice to the retail investor? In general, I stay away from all kind of regulatory and political risk. So, yeah. you know, even in... <clears throat> sectors like say <clears throat> sugar or, or oil marketing companies i find it very difficult to you know take a big call a, po a big positive call because you just never never know uh, you know and that's in a benign situation when the regulator actually against you it becomes really difficult to take a call it's a, say, i'm i'm really not keen on you know trying to participate in falling did, knives did, did you just say o omcs uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that i know i know i know <laughs> need in a, it's an unfair question but in your long career of money management you must have Owned a stock where something you woke up this during, uh, one day in the morning, yeah. and something dramatic happened. What do you, what, what do you do? Do you sell and ask questions later? Or, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's that's typically at least that's been my approach. You know, okay. uh, and most of the time, you know, what happens is then when a stock is down twenty percent, eighty percent of the people are in two minds. Mm. And that's when that's probably the only day that you get a chance to exit whatever quantity you want to, mm. because after that, when panic really sets in after a day or so, it becomes very difficult. So. Uh, you know, sometimes when, especially if there is a political event or a, you know, a geopolitical event or this regulatory kind of actions, it makes sense to just make a stop loss first or at least reduce exposure first and then think. Okay, all right, Mayor, point well taken. Thanks so much for joining in on the show and giving us your inputs. All and that's pleasure. it from me as well as all the editors here. We'll wrap up on this edition of Editor's Roundtable. You stay tuned. A lot of news and updates coming up on the other side.